Hi, and welcome to the interactive breakout session on strategic planning with Atlas Network Academy. I'm Dr. Patty Holbein. I'm the Vice President of Training and Events at Atlas Network, and I'm going to be joined by our regional expert today, Dr. Dennis Frisha from the Nakafu Policy Institute in Cameroon. So let's hop into what we're going to be discussing this morning. First of all, we're going to talk about uh, strategic planning and a SWOT analysis. Some of you may already be familiar with a SWOT analysis from previous interactions. And uh, so this will be familiar turf for you. If it's brand new to you, do not worry. Uh, you will catch on fairly quickly. It's a pretty simple tool to use. Then we'll jump into some breakout rooms where you'll have a great chance to workshop together on a SWOT analysis for your region with our regional expert. And then we'll come back and we'll get some debrief thoughts from Dr. Dennis um, after your breakout sessions, because he's going to move between the rooms. So I'm going to take a moment and let Dr. Dennis introduce himself. <clears throat> Dennis? Thank you very much. Um, really appreciate this um, opportunity to, to join Atlas um, and the Africa Liberty Forum. Once again, this is um, always an amazing opportunity for me to, to get to meet with lots of folks, get to learn a lot of learning during this um, past couple of days. Um, I'm very excited. I'm Dennis Ferretia, and I'm um, co-chair of the Dennis and Lenora Ferretia Foundation and executive chairman of um, Kapu Policy Institute. And it's um, wonderful to be here. And Kapu is in, in Cameroon. Um, and um, we, we, we've been uh, at Ankafu now since 2012. So uh, we've, we've come a long way. And it's a great opportunity and excitement to join Atlas again. So looking forward to this. Wonderful. Thank you for your introduction, Dr. Dennis. Glad to have you with us and uh, glad to have all of you on this session with us this morning as well. <clears throat> so why are we doing this particular uh, session during the Regional Liberty Forum? So it's part of an Atlas Network Training Academy uh, sessions on Think Tank 360, which is a workshop. So this is fulfilling part of a training requirement for the folks that are in that. But more importantly, it's to bring in other folks so that we can have some great collaboration within the region as well. So to kind of open it up so that there's a nice blending between folks in the region, along with uh, the folks that are already in the training process. Each of us has a different skill set. So bringing that to, to the forefront, especially when we're looking at strategic planning and a SWOT analysis is really important. Collaboration makes us better. Competition might make us faster, but collaboration definitely makes us better. And we're all about making connections, that networking connection. You know, we want to kind of imagine that you were discussing all of this over coffee at an in-person regional liberty forum, which we definitely plan to have next year if we're, we're able to. But for now, this is what we can do, and we're glad to have everybody together in this particular way. So strategic planning, it actually comes in many shapes and sizes, right? And it should be done regularly. It's not actually an event, but it's a process. So it's something that should be reviewed and kind of constantly at the top of your mind as you get new information, adjusting decisions so that you're still headed in the right direction for your particular organization and for your region as well. The SWOT analysis, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, is just one tool that can be a part of a strategic planning process. The reason for its selection is it's very simple, yet a very powerful tool. It's very easy to populate, um, especially when it's done honestly, and it helps you to decide what you will do, but equally important, it helps you decide what you will not do as well. So. In the context of that, when you're working together, think about how your organization might fit into what you're discussing in terms of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for your particular region. So conducting a SWOT analysis is pretty, pretty simple, but it actually requires a lot of honest thought and population. So honesty is everything, as mentioned here. Um, strengths. It's really easy for us to populate our strengths, right? We're, we're inclined to go in that particular direction. What gives us a little bit of a tripping point sometimes 
is the weaknesses and really being transparent about what might be the weaknesses for the region. So you're going to look at um, the strengths and weaknesses for your region and then the opportunities and threats. So opportunities, what might be opportunities in your region that might not be just for your particular organization, but think big picture in terms of what regional considerations should be. Likewise with the threats too, what could be some of those influencers that you may not necessarily have control or influence over, but could be an actual threat to your particular region and then maybe ultimately to, towards your particular organization's goals. Where we find real power is the alignment of the strengths and the opportunities. So discovering those opportunities and then leveraging the strengths in the region in your organization to take advantage of those opportunities. So it's scalable. A SWOT analysis can be done for a region an organization, or even you as an individual for professional development, if you wanted to do something along those lines. So before I get into an example of a SWOT analysis, we want to take a quick poll just to see how many of you may have already had experience with a SWOT analysis. So this is just a yes or no, and we just kind of want to take the temperature of the room to see if if you've taken a SWOT analysis. Sam is going to help us out by putting a poll up here right now and just respond yes or no to the poll, please. Okay, great. I mean, it looks like the majority of you have already had experience with the SWOT analysis. For those of you who have not, not to worry, like I mentioned earlier, we're, we're going to walk you through it and you're going to have some great time to workshop together. And the great news is you have people in your region already having experience that you'll be interacting with as well. So you'll get that robust discussion and collaboration together. So, and you will also have the benefit of Dr. Dennis coming through the, the breakout sessions to actually provide input and feedback on the development of the SWOT analysis in your breakout room. So let's have a look at an example. And I wanna just uh, caution you that this is just an example. So don't take this verbatim as the way that you should construct the SWOT analysis that you're going to work on. I know a lot of times it can be a temptation if there's an example given that you then immediately adopt the whole example as your own. So get out of the box a little bit. Take this as an example just to kind of get that spark going. And um, so let's have a look at what some activating questions and what some ideas might be for a regional SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. So in terms of strengths, Something that might pop to mind here is that effective pro-liberty think tanks based in a variety of countries around the region. So what are some organizations really good at? What aspects of liberty are generally accepted by the region? What other questions might you think of here? What other strengths might you list here? This is just the starter, remember that. The weaknesses, remember, this is typically our tripping point, right? We don't necessarily want to populate weaknesses, but this will help you keep an eye on things that may be uh, things for you to steer away from as well in terms of your strategic plan, because you don't want to necessarily want to play to your weaknesses. You want to minimize those as much as you can. So one of the, uh, one of the weaknesses that may be part of the region Again, this is just an example is that it might be a culture of philanthropy is difficult to tap into. So what activities are people not responding to? What think tank activities are we not pursuing? Why is a culture of philanthropy difficult to tap into? 
you know, are there ways to actually overcome the weaknesses or are there other factors that come into play here that it might not be uh, a good use of time and resources to try to pursue overcoming a particular weakness. So then getting into the opportunities quadrant. So an enormous number of individuals eager for change. And we certainly hope that this is an opportunity that is global for sure. Um, but so what do people wanna see improved? Is there inter-country cooperation ha happening? The collaboration opportunities and the network opportunities that we have here um, have, will be fantastic in deciding what opportunities might you actually leverage. And then lastly, the threats. You know, what might be vast discrepancies between countries that creates tension? You know, are there competitors that are actually actively working against you? What major changes are people against? Are there cultural norms that, you know, are not worth uh, butting against? So keep those things and any conflict between countries and groups in the region. So think about all of the different elements and, you know, there's, this is just the tip of the iceberg in this particular example. So what might be all of the other um, elements that you would populate in your particular SWOT? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into some breakout sessions. And as a group, you're gonna have an Atlas Network moderator in your breakout session with you that will help populate in real time a SWOT analysis for your region. And you'll have the opportunity and pleasure of having Dr. Dennis come in um, and give you feedback and input onto the SWOT analysis that you're actively creating in that breakout session. Once we've had a chance to go through the SWOT analysis over the next 30 minutes, then we'll come back and Dr. Dennis will give us a debrief on what he observed and some other ideas going forward for what's next for the, for the region as a follow-up to this workshop session. So have a great time in your breakout activities and I'll see you back here in about 30 minutes.
Okay, welcome back. I think everybody is rejoining the main session room and some amazing discussions. Hate to really cut things off, but uh, we do need to, to move on and, and do a debrief with Dr. Dennis. Uh, if you didn't get to spend as much time with Dr. Dennis in your room, you can connect on the Liberty Forum platform afterwards, but I want to give him about seven or eight minutes to do a debrief on what he was hearing in the rooms and also to kind of give you some insights into his perspective on what might be best included in a SWOT analysis for the region. Dr. Dennis? Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much um, for, for this. Uh, unfortunately, I was only able to do three out of the four breakouts just based on you know how, how, how intense it was. So I apologize for not being able to make the full, the, the, the full, um, uh, the full trip, so to speak. Um, but I, I found I found the, the, the conversation very very uh, um, engaging as as expected. Um, really a, a lot of deep insights um, on on um, the the strengths in the region um, that are seen, and also the uh, the the, the um, um, opportunities that are out there. Uh, you know, for for um, make many organizations, um, especially organizations on this platform that, uh, where we are. Um, I think there, there are some very uh, uh, common uh, co commonalities. I think folks have done a great um, thinking um, on on these issues, and there are some there are some uh, com common points that that I see um, throughout, and um, which I share. Um, the the one thing that is there regarding, uh, you know, if I go to you know the strength, um, is the 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 presence of organizations around the continent um, for people to collaborate for different organizations to bounce ideas off um, and 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 look for new ways of of, of doing um, things or um, other ways of, of skinning the cat um, and and be able to affect policy so there is that um, growing strength in numbers of organizations um, across the continent um, uh, from whom um, uh, um, uh, we can we can partner it. We can we can learn from each other, um, um, and so that's a that's a real strength. Um, the other thing that uh, came out stood out as a real strength is the acceptability of liberty. Uh, you know, um, or various forms of liberty um, being accepted, and 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 we see that a lot in in the in the African context as you know um, enterprise. You know, free enterprise uh, uh, um, uh, um, being you know. Um, doing practice, but also now the 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 the, the whole push to uh, um, allow free enterprise to 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 prosper without significant government intervention is is really something that is is becoming uh, um, uh, more accepted, um, and organizations are doing a great job in in pushing that. Um, so th th those those are some of the the, the real major uh, uh, strengths that you know that that I heard across. Um, um, the three rooms that I was able to, you know, to 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 go to, you know, weaknesses are <laughs> there. There are weaknesses, and I, and I'm glad that folks were very honest in 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 doing the the weaknesses because I find the the, the weaknesses as, you know, you have to get to a point where you are sufficiently honest with yourself in order to to uh, 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 really succeed, and you know, in order for your organization to be well place to, to respond to the threats that are out there. So you have to be able to um, really do that deep uh, um, analysis of the weaknesses, not only of your organization, but also, you know, regionally. And, and, and I saw that uh, folks had really um, highlighted many of those weaknesses, um, but not, not, not that it, it should somehow, you know, make us uh, uh, less engage or uh, make us demoralize or anything, but it just allows us to accept and figure out ways of of overcoming, you know, some of those weaknesses. Um, one of the weaknesses that that stood out uh, was the the from from the staffing of think tanks um, in the region. A lot of folks talked about the small nature that a lot of think tanks have a small staff size, and and they see that as as um, as a weakness, um, I, I do believe that um, to a certain extent, you know, that is that is um, correct. But I, I, I also I also um, think that um, the staff size by itself um, it, it is not a significant um, weakness, especially in the era in which we are. It, um, it's not a um, uh, um, significant weakness. We have to figure out um, how to 
um, uh, prioritize the staffing for, for those organizations. But again, the, the, the budgetary uh, constraints make, make that a, um, uh, what people see as, as weaknesses, um, uh, so to speak. There's also the aspect of the civic space in, in many countries being restricted. And, and so folks, folks um, um, have identified you know, the, 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 the political uh, uh, regulatory environment as, as, as a weakness. Um, do I agree? And um, to, to a certain extent, I would also say, but that's the reason why, you know, think tanks are there, <laughs> you know, they are there to, to it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fight or it's a struggle um, of ideas as um, what, what is the best idea for um, the country, for the region, how, how, how should society be organized? And um, a lot of folks on this platform, they have um, a view of how uh, um, uh, the, the society should be should be organized, and it's it's going out there and being able to convince um, policymakers, um, and folks in the media that um, this particular policy um, option is the best for the country, is the best for the region, and so um, um, there is there is that aspect. Um, on, on the on the issues of um, opportunities, um, I mean there were many opportunities that were highlighted, which I really agreed with. You know, there is the there is the uh, folks you know, talked about some friendly media that um that's available. Uh, they talked about um, issues of what you know. There was a very good question of what is it? Uh, what do people want to see improved in in the region? You know, uh, I don't remember one of the uh, which which of the the breakout sessions that was, but you know there is the whole aspect of uh, folks want uh, um, good paying jobs um, and organizations that are going to help them, you know, get good paying jobs are generally going to succeed. And I think we are we are all in there. We want to improve, you know, uh, human security. We want to improve the livelihoods and allow people to live in freedom. Um, um, and so. Uh, focusing, you know, fine tuning, looking at that opportunity that um, folks across Sub-Saharan Africa, of course, most of the world will really want to have good paying jobs to 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 earn to earn enough to 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 have a, a decent um, living, to, to to be able to uh, um, and get medicines for their kids when they are sick and all of that. So you know, um, when you focus on how to to, to make that happen, then uh, uh, folks would 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 would, um, would would come to you. So there is that. Um... Dr. Dennis. Yes, please. I hate to interrupt you. Ah. <laughs> we're we're about at time here, and I want to be respectful of the next session starting in just about a minute. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end the debrief here. Unfortunately, um, would love to continue this discussion. And you can continue this discussion online through the Liberty Forum platform. And I'm sure Dr. Dennis, you'll see his email listed here along with mine. We'd love to continue the conversation with you. This has been a great start, excellent collaboration. Please hop into the next session. Thank you very much to our co-host CDE Great Lakes in Burundi and also to Dr. Dennis with the Nkafu Policy Institute. Thank you very much, and please join the next session. Thank you. That went by fast.